you. Thank you, Bern, and thank you to the OPS organization for the opportunity to present. I hope you all start with energy. I start today very energized to be here with the online printing community. I think this industry is an example that with innovation, industries thrive. And you saw yesterday through the presentations the potential and the growth that this industry has. I'm here to share experiences. Uh, in my position, I am head of the digital inkjet business for HP, the big inkjet presses. I have the privilege to visit customers around the world. We have hundreds of those customers around, around the globe, and we learn a lot from them. Some of them are here with us today. So I'm here to try to share with you how Inkjet is progressing, but also how our customers use Inkjet to generate business, to create differentiation. And I want to start with two key questions for you. First question is, how can Inkjet technology help your business be more profitable? And the second question is, how can you combine Inkjet and your secret sauce, because you have a secret sauce in each of your businesses, to create sustained differentiation? Technology is nice. Innovation is even better. But if we do not create profit, if we do not create sustained differentiation, we are not fulfilling our purpose. And that's what the conversation is going to be about, how we connect technology, innovation, with profit and business differentiation. We are going to be talking about different vectors to create profit. I'm going to set the stage, and then we are going to go a bit deeper into them. As Bern has said, if we want Inkjet to play in mass customization, we need to do it at scale. And the first thing that Inkjet provides is capacity at scale for any type of run size. Big run sizes, small run sizes, all of them combined. The other attribute that Inkjet provides is production optimization. You can significantly reduce the footprint of operators, materials, working process in your manufacturing facility. It also offers you the ability to create more relevant content, content that makes an impact into your audience. And finally, the ability to have an efficient production, the ability to produce sequentially and be much more faster into the market. In the next 20 minutes, we're going to be talking about this and other attributes and benefits that Inkjet has for, for your business. And I am going to take examples from the industry, examples from colleagues from you that have already adopted Inkjet. Let's, let's take a brief retrospect, retrospective on how Inkjet has grown in the last few years. If you look 10 years ago, what the volume was, and which is the volume that we have today, the volume in Inkjet in the industry has multiplied by eight. Eight times the volume we used to have 10 years ago. Today, all of you, print service providers in the world, produce more than 440 billion pages every year. I repeat, 440 billion pages a year. And it used to be just 50 10 years ago. The industry analysts predict that the volume of Inkjet is going to grow 66% in the next five years. 66 in the next five years. So I see Inkjet very much aligned with the online printing industry, because this is not the growth of the printing industry, right? We know that the overall printing industry is not growing, at least and not at this rate. 
but both the online printing industry as well as inkjet are growing at an accelerated pace because we are both bringing innovation into the printing industry. Let's look at the, at the market we live in, you live in. And I think we are today in a quite unprecedented situation. I don't, I don't need to explain you why. And I see kind of a tension point between the supply and the demand side. In the supply side, you, you live every day those challenges I'm gonna talk about. Number one, paper, right? Paper has become a precious item. It's very expensive, it's difficult to find. We estimate to, that today there is a gap between demand and supply of paper of about 30%. That's how big the gap is in the industry. Lack of labor. In many countries that I visit, we have printers with presses stop because they cannot find labor. If you have an offset press and you want to staff an additional shift, forget it. At least in US, it's almost impossible to staff an additional shift. So labor is becoming another constraint. And finally, as a result of the overall situation, the cost of printing is going up. You put together paper, other materials, labor, the cost of the presses itself, the electricity, cost of printing goes up. That's what you live every day from a supply standpoint. Let's see what happens from a demand standpoint. And several trends we see almost in every country are the following. One, super fast time to market. We are now used as a society to get everything super fast, right? Next day, sometimes same day. And printing will not be an exception. Our customers demand today the printing to be there fast. They also demand the printing to be relevant. It's not anymore the spray and pray. It's not these massive quantities and see what happens, but when I print as part of a marketing campaign, it's because I want this printing to be relevant to my audience. I want this to have a specific value, to have a finishing that attracts my audience. And last, last but not least, sustainability. Germany, as we know, is one of the leading countries in sustainability. The sustainability pressure and demands come from everywhere. They come from brands, they come from end customers, they come from regulators, they come from industries. So, to some extent, we are at two ends of a river, right? With a tension point between what we see in supply, what we see in demand. And I honestly believe that digital printing, and very specifically inkjet, is the bridge that allow you to navigate those trends we see from a supply standpoint and from a demand standpoint. And to some extent, the value of digital printing goes up as we can address both the supply and the demand trends. Which are, in our opinion, and as we see our customers, the benefits that Inkjet can provide. First, a radical, radical reduction on labor. Typically, I see an offset press at least, at least with two operators. I am not mentioning binding and the finishing, which is much more, but just the press, two operators. In Inkjet, you can drive two presses with one operator. So it's a factor of four of reduction of, of labor. Somebody says, it depends. Yeah, it depends, you're right. But, but, but we have operations that are super, super um, efficient. I have a customer in, in, in UK and that's a real case, that reduce the number of printing staff by 80%. Install two presses, reduce the printing staff by, you know, from 100 to 20%, and move these uh, operators to produce other, other value uh, jobs for, for the company. It also allows you to have automation through finishing. We see more and more 
customers, automating the process from printing down to, to finishing, and therefore the ability to be much faster to, to market. We talk about relevant communication, and this kind of this is native to, to Inkjet, as the Inkjet allows you to have infinite versions, infinite type of content that you can you can produce. Also, something that is very, I would say, interesting is how the distribution of printing capacity is changing in the world. If I look five, ten years ago, we used to have these massive printing centers, right, with many, many, many presses, offset and even digital, starting to be digital. Nowadays, the world is changing from concentration of, of print and distribution of printing output to more distribution of manufacturing capacity and then a shorter distribution of the printing output. And I think Inkjet also helps to create this network of more distributed print, which is much more efficient from a logistic standpoint and is much more sustainable um, as a whole. Okay. There were some mentions about Inkjet is now ready, right, uh, by Bern, and, and I think the ones that have been in the industry for, for years know that it took a while to get us here. Inkjet wasn't ready 10 years ago for many applications. It has been a journey, and I want a little bit to describe the journey and where we are today as an industry. This is, by the way, this is not only HP. I'm talking about the Inkjet industry. What's the progress we have done so far? And by, and by the way, I'm also very happy and proud to see the innovation in the whole industry. The industries are healthy when you have competition that invest. And in this industry, we have very good players, all of them investing to improve technology. So 10 years ago, when we started, roughly, or 10, 15 years ago, Inkjet was used for very simple applications, low coverage, text, these kind of things. After a few years, then we move into niche, right, into vertical. So we were able to place Inkjet into specific applications and tailor the production to this application. No nowadays, I think I can say with confidence that Inkjet is ready to tackle a huge variety of applications. And it can do it because, number one, we have improved quality. We have today quality that is comparable to offset in almost any application. The Achilles heel of Inkjet has been always paper, right? You, the PSPs, were asking us, I need to be able to print on offset stocks. And today we have in the industry several inks, we call them universal inks, which are able to print both in uncoated, but also coated stocks. It can be matte, it can be silk, it can be, it can be glossy. It can be a very thin substrate, 40 GSMs. It can be a very thick substrate, up to 300 GSMs. So this combination of quality and um, paper substrates give a lot of flexibility to, to the print service providers. Productivity has been always kind of the, the identity of Inkjet, right? We are very productive. We have today presses that can go up to 300 meters per minute without sacrificing quality. And we have PSPs that also invest in automatic roll splicers, automatic roll changes, and can add 20% more of productivity to their facilities. And finally, automation. And this is not only us, it's also you. The ability you have to automate the process from order intake down to logistics give or takes all the power of, of Inkjet and put it into, into action. So in, in a nutshell, I think is this is how we have, as an industry, brought Inkjet to what it is today, which is in a tipping point, ready to be adopted across many applications. Let me share one example, first example from a customer. Customer in Spain called Rodona, 
north of Spain. He was an offset shop, offset shop uh, up to 12 years ago. And they moved from full offset to full digital. They have mostly focus on books, and they have press, book blog, and binding, everything connected. They received a few weeks ago a job of 50,000 books. 50,000 books. And the book had 1,000 pages. Right? These would have been, in the old days, weeks of production. 32 plates, many people in binding. It took them three, four days to complete this job with two presses. And in the same period, we discussed about marketing samples for a Bologna book fair. Can you give us 10 books, 20 books? And it took us three days as well to produce those books. And to me, what is amazing is the ability to, in the same, in the same manufacturing facility, when you have automation, you can both do these super long runs, and you can do marketing samples, and you can do print on demand, you know, with the same um, facility. That's what, to me, is very remarkable. These are some quotes from, from customers. This comes from Steve Babbitt, who is uh, uh, our CEO in DG3. This is a company in, in US, and he was comparing the time that it takes to produce 100,000 postcards. In the old days, 22 hours. Nowadays, three hours. And these are real examples of real jobs they, they are producing. And this, by the way, includes printing, cutting, overcoat, everything in line. Another customer of us, uh, Tony Pelk from a light printing company. They used to have a hybrid system, so offset presses with uh, inkjet uh, heads on top. And in a, in, a, in a recent job, we interviewed them. They, they said, look, in the old days, this used to be seven days of production. Today, it takes us 7.5 hours. These are, again, real data from real customers that have adopted Injured. I will not talk much about technology. This is not the purpose of today. But just for a minute, I'm, I'm going to open the hood of the car, and I want us to look what's, in, what's the engine of the car, how this engine looks like. This is the biggest digital press in the world. This is a press that has 2.8 meters width. I repeat, 2.8 meter width. Produces at 300 meters per minute in six colors. Okay. We use it for packaging, and is the most advanced digital press in the world. I want you to see it in action and reflect about the journey I have mentioned before. Remember, 10 years ago, we were producing with presses of half a meter width at roughly 50 or 60 meters per minute. 10 years after, we are able to produce up to 2.8 meters, six colors, 300 meters per minute. And by the way, packaging is the most, is the most challenging application in the world. You have a lot of dust, you have a lot of heat when you go through corrugation. So if we are able to do this in packaging, imagine what we can do in commercial, right? We can bring this to any single application that you have to deliver. Talking about applications, that's what really matters to you. What really matters to you is how many applications I can produce with my press how we can grow my business. And the experience I have with my customers is that sometimes the answer is, look, Carlos, I don't know, but I want to have the capability. I am doing application ABC today, but I want to explore new applications, so give me the capability to do so. And I want to underline how important it is 
because I truly believe that, that you need this capability to evolve into new applications. I'll share here the transformation example of another customer, which is called American Litho. American Litho is a data-driven marketing company in Chicago, Illinois. I'll, I will talk later a bit more about that data, because to me it's very important. American Litho was an offset, fully offset shop, up until two years ago, two years ago. In the last two years, they first started with a one press inkjet for simple applications. Six months later, they put a second press, in this case with universal inks, to produce uncoated stocks. And they added an overcoat to give this luxury finishing to the printing. As we speak today, they are adding another big press, one meter wide press, and they are going to have 340 million pages inkjet capacity a month. I repeat, 340 million pages capacity a month. And look, inkjet is always a tool, an enabler. What matters, as I said before, is how do I combine with my secret sauce? Which is the secret sauce of, of American Litho? They have a platform called Ameralytics, a data platform, and they go to a customer and say, look, this is your marketing campaign. Let me try to improve it. And the results they have is when they take the content and then start iterating and creating different versions of the content based on buyer profile, they are able to uplift response rate in the first round by 17%, in the second round by 82%. Imagine the value they provide to end customer. is much beyond the printing, and therefore how much they can extract value from this uplift in response rates. Another important element is automation. I feel a little bit embarrassed embarrassed to talk about automation to the online printing community, right? Because you are the masters and kings of automation, right? This industry exists because automation was brought to, to this industry. What I want to call out is a couple of things. Not everyone is at the same level of automation. Through interviews and surveys, it's clear that only around only 50% of print service providers in Europe have some level of automation in the middle, production, uh, finishing, and only 25% have automation on the two ends, order intake, pre-press, and then shipping and, and distribution. So there is a still a big opportunity for automation, and automation was always important. It's I would say mandatory for an online printing business, but today is more important than always because it connects with efficiency, reductions of errors, um, optimization of my production. Let's go back to data analytics and how this drives value and how it drives differentiation. I'm going to use the case of Michael Schiffer, who is a print service provider from Germany. Unfortunately, he cannot be here today. He was planning to do so. Michael Schiffer produces catalogs, B2B catalogs. And one real example we discussed this week with him, or last week, is the following. He had this big 500 pages catalog, 500. He went to customer and say, I can let me do something. I'm going to reduce the catalog from 500 to 400 pages. So I reduce 20% your cost. And I'm going to add eight pages, just eight, that are customized. And are customized based on the database that you give me of customer and customer profiles. What he told us is the uplift of sales between the old catalog, static, 
and the new catalog that has a variable part has been 350%, 3.5 times more. That's the data that he told us. Again, I think this speaks about the value you can generate when you combine the inkjet technology and data analytics and the value you can provide to end customers. So I think the encouragement is if you can invest in data analytics because it's what sets you apart, right? The printing at the end becomes a commodity unless you, you build some differentiation. Um, some of you have injured, some of you haven't. So let's share a little bit the journey of, of customers. I'll try to explain how I see customers adopting inject, the phases they go through, and how they have been successful. Typically, what they do is they take the production they have today, or part of it, and they move it to inject. Take what you have, because you will discover many low-hanging fruits. Those small run sizes, those very long jobs in terms of plates and so on, this will give immediate benefit when you move it to Inkjet. Second step, when they get familiar with Inkjet, they typically work in efficiencies. They work in automation of the line. They make it more productive, more efficient. Then, a third step would be, okay, now that I have the line running, I have a good, uh, you know, control of it, I'm going to explore new application. Now it's time to go and explore with my end customers which other applications I can do. How can I expand my possibilities? And finally, as a fourth step, I would say they get into the power of data analytics. Right? Because Inkjet, if you combine data analytics with Inkjet, then you can create the mass customization opportunities. That's a bit, again, we have many different customers. Some of the customers have already data analytics and they go immediately to step number four, right? But that's a little bit the journey I have seen in most of our, of our customers. One, one nice example of, of them is, is Simeta. Simeta is a customer in Belgium. They belong to Colrup, which is the biggest um, retail chain in, in Belgium. And they produce, again, uh, one of those catalogs that you receive at home as a loyalty buyer. Part of it is static, and part of it is variable based on, on buyer, on your profile, right? When you buy in the supermarket, you have a certain purchase, and therefore, they know you and give you certain, certain offers. Simeta started with us in 2011, and almost 10 years after, they have upgraded the whole fleet, and now they we, we kept the frame, the frame, we kept the mechanic transport system, but we changed everything else. We changed data processing servers, print heads, and we gave them the ability to multiply by two speed and multiply by two image quality. And I think this is also another beauty of Inkjet, which is we have tried to emulate a bit the heavy industries in the sense that our equipment has to be upgradable. We cannot allow ourselves nor you to have to change the equipment every two, three, five years. We need to give you the ability to keep your equipment and then rejuvenate and update the, the guts, the inside of the press. We are getting to the end, and now what I would love is to have some, some questions from each and, and every of you. Uh, I've tried to, to address how, how we see the progress of Inkjet, how we see our customers adopting it, how we see them creating value. And as I said at the beginning, 
that's the whole thing. The whole thing is can we use Inkjet to generate profit? And can we use Inkjet to create sustained differentiation? You need to feel confident that this industry is investing. We see, again, it's not just HP. We see this as a growing industry, and you will continue to see innovations going, going forward. With this, we can go and have some questions. Thank you. So, thank you very much. <laughs> It's not so easy to have the first speech in the morning, yeah, and still people coming in. But thank you very much for this, uh, for this overview. Um, let's see if we have some questions. Um, oh, 100,000 postcards in 22 hours. Please break it down. <laughs> uh, do you have a calculation on? Uh, <laughs> uh, 24 minutes for yep. replacement. Uh, uh, just 100,000 postcards in 22 hours. Please break it down. We are not a top, top level lab, label, uh, level automated, but we. Printed in less than 1.5 hours. Honestly, I don't have the breakdown here. <laughs> I, I guess I guess you are already much more efficient than than this company in the in the US. Which, by the way, is also very true. So, so typically, the level of automation we see in Europe is higher than in US, and it's a different type of market, right? US typically it's a so big market that typically your first. Um, Priority is to increase capacity. To some extent, they don't have the time to optimize automation. In Europe, especially in Germany, the level of automation, even with offset, is much higher than what you find in. Uh, I, I think the, the, there's one thing missing. Uh, we are talking about 100,000 individual postcards. Yeah, of course. Don't we? Yeah, yeah, so of course. It's, yeah. it's a little bit different. So, and if you uh, print in with the inkjet head, for example, uh, messages, okay, this can fit. But if we are talking about 100,000 individual postcards, I think this, this is the, the problem with this question. Yeah, I don't know how many different variations were there, but there yeah. were many. Yeah. Maybe not 100K, but maybe 50 yeah. or 20,000. Yeah, you know, machines is one thing. The other thing is, of course, software, software solutions. Um, what are you doing to enable your customers to really to uh, perform in mass customization? What are the offerings from HP in this direction? Mm -hmm. uh, I think a couple of things I would, I would uh, outline. Number one, we have our own um, workflow management system. Uh, it's, call, it's called SiteFlow. So that's something we offer to our customers. Uh, but also we offer the possibility to connect with different systems that are they mm -hmm. might have. So I think to me, what is key for digital inkjet providers is the, the connectivity of our systems with whatever system the customer has. Okay, cool. Now we have something like a market concentration. We see that right now due, uh, over the crisis and stuff like that. And if I see machines you presented here, uh, I always have in mind, oh, they are really expensive. <laughs> and driving this machine is also really expensive. Um, so, in your opinion, uh, what, in what direction the market is going? Is it more going into uh, a concentration and big printers, they can afford all the stuff, or is it, will it be a separate, uh, separately um, uh, market, so that means a lot of smaller printers and um, uh, some big printers? That's a great question. I see a trend towards distribution, but I see almost a bifurcation in the market. There are still some big players that maybe the, I'm, I'm going to use two identities. They are not perfect, but we are going to have big players with hybrid environments. Hybrid meaning not a hybrid press, mm -hmm. but people that have from big offset presses for the long runs and then inkjet for medium runs, uh, big inkjets and then small inkjet for short runs. And you can find this in, in one facility. But there will be fewer of those. I think what we are going to find more and more are native digital PSPs. So PSPs that move to full digital fleet that are much more agile and typically mm -hmm. smaller in, in size. OK. So there's another question. Is HP following offset Rotograver uh, 128 ongoing? I don't understand the question. <laughs> Do you understand the question? No, I don't. Following offset. 
That's a cool question. No, we are not understanding the question. So I think you we, you stay here during the uh, coffee break, right? So uh, the, the, the guy who or the lady who made the question or asked the question you should ask it directly. I don't understand it right now. So, Carl, I, I thank you very much for this great opening on the second day of OPS. You are very welcome. And, and I totally forgot to, to say uh, your title. Yeah? So because normally. Um, I always have a problem with global head of HP print and services solutions. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just to make that uh, to help the people understand that uh, this is a very high level insight about what HP is doing. Thank you very much. Al. Thank you very much.